Hello, my name is Karen Hughes and I'm the Domestic Violence Clinical Services Coordinator for the Life Crisis Center and I want to welcome you to Life Crisis Today. Suicide is a tough topic. It's a tough topic to talk about, it's a tough topic to think about, and if we have somebody that we're worried about, it's very tough. Every 11 minutes here in America, someone will die by suicide. So during the time that we're going to be talking today, two to three people may have died here in America, but it also happens here on the shore, and it happens more than we think about. So we're going to talk about that, and with me today is Leah Klump, and she is from the Jesse Klump Memorial Fund. So I want to welcome Leah. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Suicide is a tough topic. It's not something we want to think about. It's definitely not something we want to talk about. And I don't know about you, but when we start talking about it, people don't even want to use the word suicide. Absolutely, that's true. But it happens. Let's talk about how often it happens. Yeah. Um, in the U.S. today, mm -hmm. there are approximately 12.3 million people who, in 2021, seriously thought about suicide. Just thought about it. Just thought about it. Wow. Had that ideation um, of a desire to die. Right. That's a lot. Yes. Um, of those, 3.5 million made a plan. So put... Ooh the steps together right. thought seriously about how they would do it. Yeah. And then 1.7 million actually attempted suicide. Mm. So out of this, the adults who have you know, attempt, uh, actually attempted suicide, men and women are a little different. Yes, that's true. Um, women are two to three times more likely to attempt suicide than men are. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's because traditionally they will use um, pills. Oh. They have access to medication. Right. Um, but men are two to three times more likely to complete suicide. Mm. Um, so with pills, a lot of times it's more possible to save their life right. um, if they get to the hospital on time. Right. But men traditionally will be more likely to use a firearm. Oh. Mm. And that makes it more fatal. It makes it absolutely more fatal. Right. Yeah. Um, and they, the ideation of women and, and men, that happens a lot. Um, I, I understand that 87% um, actually do it within the 24 hours of the ideation. Yes. So if they've expressed this uh, idea of um, wanting to end their life or suggesting that the world would be better off without them. Right. Um, yes, within 24 hours, 87%, almost 90% of those Yikes. people right. will make an attempt. And 71% will actually make an attempt within one hour. Of the ideation. Yes. That, that's impulse. It's shocking, yeah. It's like I may have said something to you and then an hour later. Oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. Yes. That's, yeah. A so lot of time that's when they're feeling that intense pain and right. the need to end that wow. pain. A lot of times it's not that they want to die, it's right. that they want to end that pain. Teens, we think of teens being impulsive. Teens, it happens in teens as well. It does. Um, high school teens here in Maryland, actually 19.7% admitted to seriously con uh, considering attempting suicide. 19%, oh my, that's almost 20%. Almost 20% of high schoolers in Maryland. So if, if there's a classroom of, of teenagers, 20% of them could possibly have thought about it. Right, so if you have wow. 20 students in a class or 25 students, probably five of them have, Ouch. or four of them. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. And then of those uh, teens in Maryland, Actually, 14.6 made a plan, 15% almost. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then 17%, so maybe some of those being spontaneous, actually attempted suicide. My very first client I saw was actually a seven-year-old and the reason at the Life Crisis Center. The reason they had me see them is that um, they were suicidal ideation. They were expressing it at seven. Yes. So let's just even go down to middle school. Let, yeah, most what are, people do think about high schoolers and the right. the pressures on them and the changes they're going through. Right. But a lot of people do not think about younger 
children, middle schoolers, or even as young as elementary. Right. But um, in middle school, 22.7% considered attempting. Wow. And middle school, I mean, if you think about it, most people's middle school experience was not the highlight of their life. Right, um, right. Middle school is rough. It is rough. Yeah. Um, and 17.3% made a plan. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Middle school age children. Mm. 9.8%, so almost 10%, actually attempted suicide. Yikes. Of middle school age. So we really need to pay attention to this. We absolutely do. Let's talk about warning signs, because people do give some. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we don't know is the happy face, right. but then they're really suicidal. Um, but there are some signs. Now, some of them are, are obvious, I would say, thing, you know, expressing suicidal ideation, saying, you know, I, I, my life isn't going anywhere, nobody would miss me, mm -hmm. uh, nobody listens to me, mm -hmm. expressing, you know, these negative thoughts and feelings about their own existence. Right. I would say those are the most obvious, but then there's withdrawal, Mm -hmm. Not just isolating yourself from other people, but also uh, withdraw from activities that mm -hmm. you like to do, um, that people have enjoyed. Um, mm -hmm. And then additionally, it can be the opposite kind of thing, suddenly becoming reckless and in, uh, doing more risky behaviors, okay. maybe driving too fast mm -hmm. or, um, or even going as far as using um, substances, mm -hmm. alcohol or drugs. Mm -hmm. um, one that a lot of people don't probably think about would be mood swings, not just the mood swing that you expect where people were feeling good and then suddenly seem sad, depressed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but also the opposite. Mm -hmm. Going from being extremely depressed during a time and, and quiet and subdued to suddenly seeming happy or positive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because that can mean that someone actually decided that they have a solution to their problem. Right. So that's also something to look for. Right. Um, and one that I noticed actually um, personally in my life, a suicide that I experienced, mm. uh, was giving away possessions. Right. Um, people start thinking, I don't need this anymore. Here, I'm going to give this to you, this to you. Right. It's um, kind of their way of saying goodbye. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but generally, yeah, it's changes in mood, uh, change in behavior, also uh, feeling anxious, restless, mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and being more impulsive. Yeah. So when you do notice those signs, mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking of if I had someone in my life that I'm worried about, what do I do? I'm, I, I said earlier, we don't even want to use the word suicide, but we need to. Right. So how, how do I approach somebody? How do I talk to somebody? Yeah, I think it's essential that we actually do use the word because mm -hmm. um, if you ask someone, uh, have you, are you thinking about hurting yourself right. or something? Then the answer may be no, because they don't see it as, as hurting mm -hmm. themselves. They see it as helping themselves right. or solving Putting themselves problem. out their right. misery, right. So it's important to actually right. say, have you considered suicide? Are you thinking about killing yourself? Right. Um, because then they're forced to confront yeah. that and answer it, right. honestly. Yeah. Um, and also, t I think using the word su suicide mm -hmm. takes a little bit of the stigma away. It does. Because you are now a person they can talk to, that mm -hmm. you're willing to use that word. Absolutely true. Yeah. Yes. Um, and you want to make sure that they are aware that you are someone that can be trusted right. and that they can feel open to mm -hmm. confide in. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, if they answer yes, that they are thinking about suicide then you'll want to ask if they have a plan. Right, right. Because that would mean that they're moving into action. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have a plan? Have uh -huh. you thought about how you would do this? Right, right. Because that will enable you if they've said, yes, I know I have um, my father's rifle mm. in the other room, or um, I have access, my mom has some pain medication, mm -hmm. and or I thought I was just going to park my car in the garage. And, mm -hmm. 
um, then you can think about how to remove the, ma the means and right. keep that person safe. Right, right. And also, if, who else do they have in their life that might be their support? Can we call your mom? Can we call exactly you know, or get somebody else helping you right. too? Right, yeah. because we have to admit that, you know, I personally at least am not um, a professional in that capacity, right. although I do have knowledge. I'm not a trained professional mm -hmm. to respond to that. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the next thing I want to do is look for who else they can lean on, depend on, right. who we can contact to get right. professional help. Right. Um, and there is professional help. I mean, there are, are places that you, they could go. Yes. Um, so let's talk about that. Um, mm -hmm. Suggestions. Um, I would say the national hotline that um, just recently was released, much easier than remembering a long number, 988. Yes. You can call 988, yes. similar to 911. Right. Um, and that way you'll be connected to someone who can talk to you right, right away. Right. And they are trained, for, I mean, it's a suicide hotline, so they exactly. are so Exactly. They're trained. trained specifically for that right. need. Mm -hmm. Um, additionally, you have the Life Crisis right. Center. Yeah. Well, we're part of 988, so <laughs> we yes. are trained, yes. And um, if someone is feeling suicidal, um, because a lot of times um, something that puts someone more at risk is having lost someone to suicide, mm -hmm. there's also a group that we offer at the Jesse Clump Memorial Fund, um, a grievers group. Oh. Um, SOS group. Okay. For... Um, anyone who has lost a loved one, a friend, a neighbor, anybody that you know, um, to come and talk with other people going through the same type right. of grief because suicide grief is a very unique type of grief. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they, they need that support. And there's yes. something about having peer support of other people who have walked that same walk Absolutely. and still feeling the, all the emotions. It's so different than if you were... Well, if I were in the room, it's not something I've experienced. So I would, I can be sympathetic, but I don't, I didn't live you it. I haven't been there. Right, I didn't. Exactly. Right, yeah. 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 It means a lot to be able to feel like what you're experiencing is normal. Other people may be feeling the same way, mm -hmm. have gone through the same things. And there's people at different stages, of course. There right. may be people there who lost someone you know, such as myself over 10 years ago mm -hmm. um, and someone who has just lost someone last month. Right. You know, so there's different stages of where they are and you can yes. kind of see how you could progress and right. that really right. you can heal. I know I, I have support groups that I, I run and the people who've been there long, longer, um, I call them the seasoned, seasoned people, <laughs> yeah. um, that they... They get stuff when they're giving to the newer people. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it helps in their still in their own healing to be able to help this new person along, um, and it kind of reinforces yes. where they've been and, and helps make, move them to the next step as well. Right. I yeah. definitely think that it's a positive form of therapy to be able to help someone else. Right. Absolutely. Right. Um, and use what you've already gone through mm -hmm. to be able to create a positive effect in right. someone else's life. Yeah. So where does the group meet? The group meets in Berlin, actually at the Berlin Health Center. Uh -huh. That's 9730 uh, Healthway Drive right near AGH. Oh, that's like right across the street from it. Yes. Yeah. And that's okay. from 6 to 7.30 every third Wednesday. Every third Wednesday. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if they are um, the people who are left behind after a suicide, this is the grievers group for them. Exactly. Right. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the Jesse Clut Memorial Fund, that's where you, you know, you're, you're from and you're representing. Exactly. Let's talk about that. What do, what, tell me about it. So the Jesse Clut Memorial Fund actually exists to educate the public about what can lead one to become suicidal mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and also to help those who are suffering a loss. Right. Um, of a loved one. And we additionally provide money, um, funding to professionals mm -hmm. um, continuing their education in mental health or in suicide. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you do some fundraising. Yes. Um, I know there's some things coming up. What's coming up? 
we have our big annual fundraiser that is Jesse's Paddle. Uh -huh. And that is um, September 16th. Mm -hmm. um, and that will be from 4 to 7 p.m. And what is that and what do you, if somebody wanted to partake in it? So that's at the Snow Hill, um, the canoe company. Oh. Okay. And what we do is we take <coughs> kayaks and canoes out on the river. Um, and that's actually because um, this, the, the fund was actually started um, after I lost my brother. Mm. Uh, in 2009, and he worked at the canoe company oh, okay. um, as a teenager, wow. you know, helping lift the boats. Mm -hmm. and so that was our first idea for a mm -hmm. fundraiser, and it's our longest running fundraiser. Wow. Um, and people come out, they take out canoes, kayaks, paddle boards. Um, you can bring your own or you can reserve one there. Okay. Um, and we all go out on the river. Uh, Traditionally, we do a, a scavenger hunt. Oh, cool. Yeah. That sounds um, cool. Type of go out and get, um, it's called a poker paddle, so you have to go out to certain points where there's boats and bring back cards and see if you got uh, the hand, the lucky hand the to lucky win hand. prizes. Uh, there's also a silent auction mm -hmm. at the event, uh, a 50-50 raffle, live music, food, beverages. So it's a really fun time. It a sounds fun afternoon, like it. Beautiful weather usually in September. Right. Um, and uh, I think it's a really great way to to remember Jesse um, mm -hmm. in our community and also to raise money toward preventing and raising awareness about suicide. Well, um, I want to thank you. Thank you for coming and thank you for um, telling about this. Um, it's an important topic and we need to not be afraid to talk about it. Um, Absolutely. So and that we can maybe help one person to prevent them from um, actually dying by suicide. Yeah, if we yeah. can save one, one life, life right. we're doing our job. Right, <laughs> right. Reaching out to one, someone, one more person not have to go through the tragedy that so many have. Right. And also helping those that are left behind. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. Yeah. And thank you for joining us. As I said, this is not easy to talk about. But if you do have thoughts of suicide, or if you know a loved one that you're worried about and not sure what to do, please reach out. There are a lot of resources that you can get help from. There is the National Suicide Hotline, and we said that number is 988. It's real easy to remember. Also, the Life Crisis Center, we have a hotline, and our hotline number is 410-749-HELP. Again, if you want the numbers, it's 410-749-4357. We're part of 211, which is information and referral. Every state has information and referral, 211, and the Life Crisis Center answers that line as well. If you're a person that doesn't want to talk, but you like to text, there's a lot of people who like to text to chat, um, that number is 898-211. So you can text to chat and somebody can help you there as well. Also, the Jesse Clump Memorial Fund has their own website, jessepaddle.org. And they have lots of things there. They have a resource guide. They have alternatives that maybe not traditional therapies, um, things that pe people can get for help. The Life Crisis Center has a website as well. And that is www.lifecrisiscenter.org. We are, both of us have Facebook pages um, as well as Instagram. There's lots of ways to reach out. Please do not suffer. Do not worry. There is help. I also want to thank PAC14 for making this show available. Thank you.